Look on the screen. Look on the screen. Suspected murderer. It's getting stranger and crazier by the day. Sometimes I do have to take a break because you look at it, it's like, okay, a lot of negative things happen. But unfortunately, people, this is a world that we live in. Can't be all Pollyanna where everything is rosy and great. You know, some things are, but a lot of things are not. You're not even safe in your own home. And this here is a good example. This here happened, happened in Lakeland, Lakeland, Florida. Humanity has left the building. Humanity has left society on so many levels. So fair use. Let's just get to it. Check out the story. Fair use. Disturbing new details on that horrific murder that left four people dead in North Lakeland. ABC Action News reporter Rebecca Petit explains how the suspect made his way from Brandon to Lakeland to execute his plan. Mm. What drove a former decorated war veteran to kill four people he had no connection to is becoming clearer as the investigation continues. This is the most extensive single crime scene that we have worked that I can remember. Sheriff Grady Judd says the 33-year-old suspect went to a friend's house to pick up a first aid kit on <clears throat> Saturday night. That friend lives near the home where the murders took place. Authorities say when the suspect left his friends, he saw Justice Gleason, one of the victims, mowing his lawn. He told Gleason he was looking for a girl named Amber who was a victim of sex trafficking and was going to commit suicide. Authorities say Amber is a person the suspect made up. He was very angry at justice because he thought justice had kept him from seeing this child amber that was going to commit suicide and that's when brian riley our suspect our murder suspect wow <clears throat> said god told me to kill everyone Investigators say Sunday around 1 in the morning, the suspect returned to the victim's home in North Lakeland. He searched through and spent time at the house to locate three entrance points into the homes. He planned out his diversions and he prepared his exit strategy. Hours later, he shot through the windows, entering into the home of the 62-year-old victim, shooting and killing her. He then shot out the back door into the main house, killing Gleason, his 33-year-old girlfriend, and their three-month-old son, who were hiding in the bathroom, then took the 11-year-old victim from the bathroom to the living room. And that's when he called me Amber, and I told him, I'm not Amber. And he said, three, two, one, and he shot me. The 11-year-old victim told detectives that she played dead, and that's likely how she survived. The suspect, who was wearing a bulletproof vest, was shot by law enforcement through the stomach before surrendering. Authorities say the suspect shot inside the home more than 100 times. The 11-year-old victim has undergone multiple surgeries and is expected to recover. The sheriff's office is asking you to help the victim's family by donating through Polk Sheriff's Charity. Rebecca. Wow. Shot through the home more than 100 times. Don't even know the people. And then a family wiped out. Then shoots the 11 year old. Now stop and think if she was and just thank thank the universe above that she is alive. Think if she hadn't played dead, he might still be out there. More than likely he would. He doesn't even know them. He went to visit a friend. The friend probably wouldn't think that he did that. If that 11 year old would not have survived, then he would more than likely still be free walk, walking among the people in that community. The lunacy is real. 
And people say, oh, you know, it's a military person. They have this, that, and, and the other. Yeah, they also have medications for that. But here's the thing. Uh, and my dad was a veteran, so not dissing him. And it's the same thing I hear with, uh, you know, mentally ill. Oh, but they didn't take their medicine, this, that, and the other. But I do notice, I just don't understand why when people want to hurt other people, they don't hurt themselves. You didn't shoot yourself with a gun. Why? But you shoot other people. I mean, even the three-month-old baby is gone. So imagine one o'clock in the morning. And the person he's looking for doesn't even exist. And he's saying, God told him to do this? Are you really serious? There's mental I issues, I believe, with a criminal element, is my opinion. The good thing is, they've got him. And they shot him in the stomach. Oh, gosh, really? In the stomach? Those people, they're deceased. That 11-year-old, her family's wiped out. 62-year-old, maybe mom and dad and the baby, three-month-old didn't even make it. Imagine the terror in your home, one o'clock in the morning, by this on the screen. And you want about my jingle? Beware the angry white man. Please have your gun in hand. He'll come for you. You don't even know this fool. Go upside your head. Lay down and play dead. Beware the angry white man. Please have your gun in hand. One o'clock in the morning, more than likely those people are asleep. But the 11-year-old, she, this thing, he, she shot her and she played dead. Now, I know that's a jingle. But you look at it. I came up with the jingle. It's, you know, look at look at real life. Beware, beware of everybody. Everyone. So look on the screen. Look on the screen. Dusty's being drama. They've been trauma. Can you imagine an 11-year-old? I mean, how do you even process this? Your family's gone. Now they got funerals. There might be a GoFundMe up. 62-year-old. A couple. The three-month-old. So how does an 11-year-old process all this? And then to look at this person, this man on the screen, this Dusty, this dust bucket. And it could be mental, it could be a lot of things, but I just cannot excuse violence. And look at her at 3, 2, 1, and then shoot. Really? Imagine how how is she to process this information. And I, But guess what? This happens every day in the BC, you know, people shooting people. So when I say Dusty's bring drama, they bring trauma. The financial implications, too much dust in the nation. This dust is everywhere. Inner city, sub suburban, big city, small town, rural area. It's everywhere. No nationality is exempt. The dust among us, it's very dangerous. So people love your families. This here, I mean, this thing, they didn't even know this, didn't even notice, no, no, know it. And he comes up with this fake name, you know, I'm looking for Amber. Really? I wonder, was he taking something? Or was this just something that he does? But this here, look at the drama that he's caused. And his family might be weeping for him. Oh, especially you know the parents my son will he you know whatever his name is i'll just say example billy well look what billy's done you can look at your son your people that people like this here when their when their loved ones commit crimes the good thing about it for them is you know you're crying about your loved one but sometimes they need to look at the harm that their loved one has caused that 11 year old girl family's gone can you imagine the sounds, hearing the shootings, hearing it, and knowing everybody's gone? That that is a living nightmare. And guess what? The kids in the inner city, Detroit, Chicago, Baltimore, it's happening to someone every day. And then you wonder why some kids have a learning disability can't concentrate you have no idea the trauma that they have suffered why well, the person can't learn it's, it's the, the surrounding what they've been exposed to what what has happened 
That's why I try to tell young women, go ahead and have a child with this bucket if you want to. It's going to get to a point, it should be child abuse, because everyone, we should know what's going on. You wonder why some kids can't learn. Dusties. The Dusties have brought in so much drama and trauma to the communities that sometimes, a lot of times, the survivors are affected. And they're not getting counseling. In some communities, counseling is, oh, they're going to think you crazy. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Are you kidding? You must be crazy. So they just suffer, and people suffer in silence. So you wonder why some kids, there's no drug abuse problem. They can't learn. Something else going on, is going on. Life experiences that can adversely affect their learning ability. Can't concentrate. Restless. And then being told, oh, you keep feeling you can't read. You're not doing very well in school. You must be so, must be dumb. Mm-mm. They could have, it's sometimes the things that they're surrounded that have an adverse effect on them. So for the 11 year old, I hope she gets counseling and that's just, I mean, that can't compare to the loss. But think, this is happening every day, especially in the inner cities, just shootings. Chicago, kid riding in the car with his mom, shot in the head. Baby turns down the wrong street near the Wendy's where there there was a police shooting. Gang bangers going to block it off. Oh, she didn't pay the toll. That's what I'm hearing. And the next thing you know, they shoot the vehicle up. Child shot dead. As an everyday occurrence in Blackistan. So yeah, the dust, no one is exempt from the dust. We'll see what happens with the follow-up. But dusties bring trauma. They bring drama. The financial implications too much dust in the nation. An entire family wiped out. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Anyway, look forward to your comments. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe, and share. I'm out. Love you guys. Please, I beg of you, stay safe.